Mm, not a bad movie, eh? Hey guys, this is my review for Bong Cop, Bad Cop, the first film, which is actually, if I'm correct, the highest grossing Canadian film ever made in Canada. Now, while you American viewers may not give a crap, this is one of our best movies that we've made in a long time. This movie came out in 2006. If any of you have Canadian Netflix, you will have noticed that it disappeared. It actually was quite funny. There was a lot of Canadian jokes in it. It had two very good performances from Colin Farrell and Patrick Howard. The film is about two cops, one from Ontario and one from Quebec. And for anyone who knows, any Canadian and or American who may know, those two provinces don't really have a good reputation between each other. If not just with hockey, with anything in general. So a murdered body is found on top of a <laughs> of a, a state line sign, uh, or a province line sign. His ass is in Ontario and his head is in Quebec. And the first scene where the two cops meet and they argue about who owns the body is hysterical. It is one of the funniest scenes in the movie and everything just gets better from there. It turns out that the perp, the villain of this film, is getting revenge on high level hockey executives who were responsible for the trade of the Great One. And you will notice that they go to great strides to barely just not say Wayne Gretzky's name. All the hockey teams in this movie are fake names, but Boy, do you know what they're talking about right off the bat. The guy is going after high-level hockey people who traded Canadian great hockey players to American teams purely for money and ruined the chances of big Canadian hockey teams. And this guy's got a grudge against all of them. And what's funny is, right off the bat, Canadians can relate to that because the trade of Wayne Gretzky was an awful trade. He was the best player we've ever had in all of history, and the Edmonton Oilers I've never ever seen that limelight since, even after this really good playoff run, which is the first time they've done in like 10 years. That trade is still a black mark on Canadian history. So what transpires is this investigation into finding out where this guy is and how he's operating and trying to stop him from killing off other executives, including a midget. And the relationship between Colin Farrell and Patrick Howard is fantastic. Patrick Howard is the bad cop. He's the renegade cop who doesn't really play by the rules, whereas Colin Farrell is a federal, very by-the-book guy. It's their own version of Lethal Weapon, really. The chemistry between the two is absolutely great. They start off hating each other and then eventually they respect each other. And the jokes, the jokes between Quebecois and other Canadians is hysterical. They make so many jokes that I love because I admit, there are some Quebecers who are absolutely ridiculous, but then again, there are other Canadians who are ridiculous for their own stereotypes. And from a Canadian's perspective, this is a fantastic movie. It is a really fun, really well shot. The editing is very sporadic. There's a lot of up-close uh, Dutch angles, which you would think is kind of annoying, but it actually works. It's the most dynamic film you could ever think of that be made by a Canadian. But either way, Bon Cop, Bad Cop is a fun time. It is one of my favorite Canadian films ever made. I absolutely adored watching this movie when I was a kid, and when I saw it was on Netflix, I instantly picked it up again. That was 10 years ago. By the way, they'd also have Rick Mercer in it, and he's an asshole, which is really funny because and all the stuff he does, he's a very smart, very caring, very funny guy. And this one, he's funny, but he's an asshole. So in the end, I will give Bong Cop, Bad Cop a 5 out of 7. It is an enjoyable movie. It is one of Canada's best films, and it's our highest grossing film, apparently. I'm doing this review mainly because the second one has just come out, and I plan to see that very, very soon. So I hope you guys enjoy, and also showing you that even Canadians can make really out of nowhere sequels to movies that are over 10 years old. Anyways, see you guys later.